Hello, it is I, Dr. Brian Lorgan111, and I am here today to announce the official release of the Minecraft Bingo Map so that you can download it and play it on your own. But I wanted to make an instructional video just to kind of walk through how things work. Honestly, if you guys have watched the 90 second map trailer I put out about a week ago, and have you? Have you? Have you watched the map trailer? It's good. It has music. It's very epic. <laughs> uh, check it out. Um, then you probably maybe already know enough that you could download the map and play the game, but there's a number of things I just want to talk about. And so in this video, I'm going to try to quickly walk through some important essential bits. Uh, for those of you who don't know about Bingo, apparently I played a previous game and so I just cleared the board and so it's clearing things out. You get a Bingo map that looks like this. It's a five by five grid of different Minecraft items, and you go out into the normal Minecraft world and just try to collect them as fast as possible, where the goal is to get five in a row, or in a column, or diagonally in order to win. Um, yeah, and there's a little bit of a description of Bingo on some signs on the wall here. Yeah, there's a lot of signs in the little spawn room here. If, you, if you're playing in single player, uh, you should spawn right here at 150, 150, 150. If you're playing in multiplayer, if you put this up on a server, it might uh, start you somewhere crazy uh, because in servers, like you end up like teleporting up to the roof or something. Uh, and so you might start up in this glass box here. And if you do, hopefully you will read some just signs that say, go press the button near the south end. There's also a big arrow that's pointing at it. So hopefully you'll find that and press the button and that will actually teleport you here into the spawn room. So if you start up there, that's how you get down here. Um, and I guess since we're up there, uh, if you look up here, this is actually where the map is as well. So like when I'm looking at a map, like this is what Minecraft sees and that's why it's on the map and it has all of these items. So yeah, anyway, that is that. And all right, there's, there's a bunch of things that I wanna talk about. And so let's just kind of go through them. Uh, you should be able to recognize all of these items. In case you cannot, I am just going to read them off in order. Uh, we have, what do we have? We have a gold bar, a cauldron, a brick. Yes, that's a brick. You get it by taking a clay ball and putting it in a furnace. I know with stained clay, some people have forgotten about that. A book, a vine, a name tag, a slime ball, an emerald, a lapis, a, an apple, a carrot, redstone dust, uh, creeper dust, gunpowder, whatever, a saddle, a cookie wheat, cocoa bean wheat, you can craft it. Um, a spider eye, this that I'm standing on and kind of obscuring is the one that people have the most trouble figuring out what it is. It's mushroom soup. Um, a bone, an eye of ender. Uh, no, not an ender eye, ender pearl. Um, a flint, not a cake. I've replaced the cake, it's now a flint. A watermelon, a rail, just a normal rail, a diamond, a glass bottle, and a fish. And actually, any kind of fish will work uh, that you can fish out of the water. So those are the 25 items. And one of the buttons in here will randomize the bingo card. Uh, and so they're currently in this order. But if you press this button, uh, it says, please wait while the board is randomized. This takes about 60 seconds. Um, and it will give you kind of progress updates as it's going on. Uh, but this goes and actually changes the map that we were just looking at on the ceiling. And this is actually, honestly, it's like one of the best features of the whole thing. I think that this is fun to watch. There's one of the cave noises that you always get randomly in the snapshot. Um, but yeah, it will just go and kind of reshuffle, reorder all of the items on the card. And so I'm going to let that run uh, for just a moment while I'm doing this. Uh, I guess this is a good time to uh, acknowledge and thank the people who helped me test the map before uh, releasing. The map is in much better shape and will be more enjoyable to play as a result of these people helping me out. Um, so thank you to uh, Burgasms, who did a lot of testing with me, especially in kind of the alpha phases. Kurt J. Mack, you saw the two of us play that map uh, on video together probably yesterday, and we actually had to record it like five times because we had some server crashes and some glitches and different things to get through. So thank you very much, Kurt. Uh, 3-2, uh, the guy who made Final Fantasy maps uh, and is a map maker, uh, came in and gave me some advice. Traslander is also kind of a map maker, creator kind of guy or whatever, who took a look. Uh, and Generic B, who also helped me with some play testing and who just suggested that I should make things a little shorter because the map was running a little bit long. And I didn't notice. Did it already say 
it says about 60% done. This is this is taking its sweet time uh, to go ahead and finish. About 80% done. It usually runs faster than this. Almost done. Yeah, we're down to... It does, when it gets to the very end, it goes a little bit slow to replace the last item. There we go. Board randomization complete. And so now we've got the same 25 items, but they're in different locations on the board. And let's see. Um, before I forget, I mentioned we're playing in the snapshot. This map is played in 14 week 11B snapshot. Once again, that is 14 week 11B. Can you play it on your bucket server? No. I have 1.7. Can I use that? No. Hey, Brian, I'm watching this video a week from now, and there's some new snapshot. Can I play it in that? No. The only, the only version that this map has ever been played, ever been tested in, is 14 week 11B. You want to play 14 week 11B, you're welcome to open the map in some other version of Minecraft, uh, but if it crashes or sets your house on fire... Or, I don't know, maybe good things will happen. Maybe you'll win the lottery as a result of opening the map in some other version. Um, but that's that's not my problem. <laughs> don't come to me if the map doesn't work in another version. 14 week 11B. Um, all right, so what do you do? There's a big go button over here. But if you just go and rush over and try to press it, um, it will do some things. Uh, for example, to make sure that the map has been updated. Um, but we haven't actually joined a team yet, and so there's some stuff in the chat that's going to get printed right here. Uh, but basically it's telling you, if you want a one-player game, someone should join the red team. Like it says on the sign. So I'll join the red team. And you will notice over on the scoreboard over here, my name lights up in red, uh, because that's my in-game name. Um, and now we're ready to go. If you're playing on a server and you have two players who want to play at the same time head-to-head, -head, one of them can also join the blue team. And if you have an extra player to hold maps, uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. They can join the white team. But let's go ahead and press the button to start the game. And some crazy stuff will happen. You get teleported kind of outside into like command block region area over here while it clears the board if you're the red player. And then it's going to use a spread player's command to spread you somewhere randomly in the world. Uh, and the world is just a normal Minecraft world kind of outside of the spawn box area. And then after a few seconds, it'll say, start, go. Uh, and the difficulty is on normal. If you want to set the difficulty, you can always change it yourself. Uh, you get handed a stack of 64 maps, and you just go run around and start playing Minecraft and try to collect these items. And rather than do that on screen, because uh, that'll take a little while, um, I'm just going to cheat. You'll notice that... Oops, I want game mode. I'm now in creative mode. I can fly. I can get all the items very easily. Uh, you'll notice in the spawn room, I don't say anything about rules, because here's my opinion about Minecraft and rules. Uh, Minecraft, like, is a game without rules. It's open world. You can play it however you want. If you want to go in creative and give yourself all the items, you're welcome to do that. Um, you can do whatever you want, whatever is fun. Do whatever is fun for you. I made a map that is kind of designed for steering you into a particular fun way of playing. Uh, but if you want to change the rules and do whatever you want, that's fine. Uh, so I'm here in creative mode. Let's take a look at the map. The first item is a flint, and the second item is an emerald. So I could go uh, and get some of these items. Here's an emerald. If I get it, you'll hear a firework sound. Brian got an item. You'll notice that the map is not updating yet, uh, because I'm just in single player. If I get a flint, I can do that. Let's me know I got an item up on the scoreboard uh, over here on the right. It shows me that I've gotten two points. I've gotten two items. Uh, but then also in the chat, it'll say to update the map, uh, hold it and press Q or whatever your drop key is. Uh, and so if I drop a map on the ground, I will get temporarily teleported somewhere uh, where the map will update and then I'll get teleported right back to where I was. Um, and that actually updates the map. And what's going on here is for those of you who don't know just how Minecraft works and some chunks are not loading. So I'll press F3A to reload some chunks. Uh, for those of you who don't know how Minecraft works, Minecraft maps only update if A, a player is holding them, and B, they're standing in the location in the map. And we already saw the map earlier. It's at the spawn location. And so when you drop a map on the ground, basically there's something that goes and tests like every second to see if there's a map entity on the ground within five blocks of a player. Uh, and if it is, it will teleport that player uh, back to spawn so that they can update the map and actually see, you know, on the scorecard now, uh, up here, the flint and the emerald that I got, there's circles around them saying, hey, I got those items. And that's how the map kind of automatically keeps track for you. Um, but anytime you want to uh, go and update the map, uh, you can simply drop a map on the ground 
you'll get teleported, and then you'll get teleported back a moment later. And you may notice that it also, like I was facing north that time, if I turn around and face uh, south over here towards, looks like there might be an ocean just over this hill <laughs> that I'm seeing through the world through some chunks. Uh, yeah, if I'm facing the ocean over here and I drop a map on the ground, uh, it'll teleport me into this little bedrock box for just a moment for my map to update. And when it teleports me back, it tries to preserve which of the four cardinal directions you're looking in um, because it's pretty disorienting to get teleported and teleported back. Um, but this is the magic that allows you to kind of update the map uh, in single player. Um, without someone else holding the map at spawn. And it's one of the main improvements from my previous version of the map. Um, I made a Minecraft bingo like six months ago uh, when things were much more difficult and there were much fewer capabilities and the map was not very good and only a few people played it. But this one's going to be awesome. You're going to love it. Uh, let's see. Let me think about what else I need to talk about. Ah, uh, yes. So the maps. I give you a stack of 64 maps. Each time you, you know, get an item and want to update the map, you can throw one on the ground. Um, and so some people will probably be wondering, what happens if I run out of maps? Uh, you may also notice that the ones you throw on the ground disappear, like they just get like killed as entities out of the world. Um, yeah, if you run out of maps, if you throw all of your maps on the ground, for example, they're gone! But don't worry, uh, because if the game detects that any player isn't holding any maps for longer than a few seconds, uh, it just goes and throws another 64 maps into their inventory. Uh, and so it's not a problem if you lose all of your maps. And it's also, uh, that is useful in case, for example, uh, some people might ask what happens if you die uh, in this game. And, wow, I hear a lot of bad guys. It sounds like there's a cave right here that is full of bad guys. And we're in creative mode, so I don't care. <laughs> I can go fight them all. Um, let's see. Yeah. If you die, like, you could either play that the game is over and you lost, or you can uh, continue playing. And so if I type slash kill, um, I will respawn. I'll respawn at the same place that I originally spawned, or not spawned, but got spread player, uh, because it sets your spawn point there. Something I think I might have forgotten to mention. Uh, it puts you some random spot in the world. If you look at my coordinates up on the top left, I'm at, like, X of minus 150,000 and Z of minus 100,000. Uh, I think it spreads the players randomly somewhere in plus or minus 200,000, um, which means there's a whole big Minecraft world. Each time you play the map, uh, you are likely to start in a different biome. And in fact, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to teleport myself to uh, 150, 150, 150, which is back in the spawn room. Um, when you're done with the game, if you want to reset the card, you can press this button and it'll erase all the scores from the scoreboard. The scoreboard has disappeared. And it will also erase all of the marks on the bingo card. If you want to play with that same bingo card again, you can just kind of join your teams once again uh, and press the start button and play again another, another game, another round on the same bingo card. If you want a different bingo card, you can go press that randomize button and wait for 60 seconds and you'll get a new randomized card. Then you can go play the game again. Uh, but you don't need to reset the map or anything. These sheep are suffocating inside tree leaves. Look at that, I get free wool. You'll notice when you first started, uh, you have a slowness effect. Uh, that was the potion effect you may have seen. Just kind of keeps you from moving around until the game is ready to start and the game actually says go. You'll also notice I'm in survival mode uh, and I've got full hearts and full hunger uh, because the game will go and uh, heal the player and give them all their hunger back right at the beginning of the game, right when it first starts. It'll reset the time to zero. Um, and this time I'm in a completely different section of the world uh, and so you can just kind of play the game over and over and over again, and it is very unlikely that you will run into another player in two-player mode, uh, or that you will discover an area of the world that you've already explored and lit up the caves with torches from some previous run-through, um, unless you play, I don't know, like a thousand games back-to-back, -back, then you might start running into things that you've seen before. Um, so you probably don't need to worry about resetting the map, um, although if something does go wrong with the map or glitch out or something, then you obviously could always just you know download a fresh copy of the map or unzip a new copy of the map from when you originally downloaded it and just kind of replace the map. Um, let's see. Something that has not happened yet, but that is a bug currently in Minecraft with uh, spread players, is that occasionally when you call spread players to randomly go somewhere in the map, uh, it will put you 
underground in a cave or in a wall in a mountain where you immediately start suffocating to death. Uh, that's just a bug in the spread player's command that I can't really do anything to fix. It seems to happen about one in every 20 or 30 times. All right, we're starting in a roofed forest, it would appear, over here this time around. Um, and so if you happen to press the start button and all of a sudden discover that you were suffocating in a wall, um, sorry about that. Uh, it's just a bug in Minecraft. Uh, just go back to the spawn room and play again. Um, and yeah, you'll get a better spawn that time around. And if you don't like your spawn point, you can do that too, because there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Uh, let's see. I'm sure there's still other things to talk about. One of the things you may notice about the items on the map is these are all items you can obtain in the overworld. You do not need to go to the nether. You do not need to go to the end. In fact, you should not go to those places uh, because part of the thing with the map teleporting you all around or whatever, um, with command blocks, you can do a whole lot of things with command blocks, but one of the things you cannot do is detect if players are in another realm, if they are in the nether, or if they are in the end, or teleport them between realms. Uh, and so if you go to the nether and you drop a map on the ground, it'll probably teleport you to like zero, zero in the nether or something, and then who knows what happens or who knows if it'll even work at all. Um, so yeah, for this map, don't go to the nether. You don't need to go to the nether. The trick of throwing a map on the ground to update the map is unnecessary if you have an extra player. Maybe you have a second Minecraft account. Maybe you have a sibling whose account you can borrow or something. Uh, you can always go and open to LAN. And you could even like start people out in creative mode with cheats on in case they need to like teleport around on the map and say, start a LAN world. And I happen to have a second account. And so one moment while I go ahead and get that set up. So here's my second account, Camera2. Hello there, Camera2. Welcome to the game. Oh, that's right, you're in creative mode. I can't punch you. Um, and so basically, you can use those extra accounts to join the white team, in which case a player will simply stand here and hold a map the entire time. And so I'm actually going to go over to Camera2 and have him walk over here and join the white team. Great. And maybe somehow I accidentally scroll away uh, so that he is not actually holding the map right now. But don't worry, it's not a problem. I'm going to go ahead and join the red team, because once again, I'm just playing single player. He's not actually playing. He's just here to help me out. Uh, and so if I start the game, I'm going to get a bunch of bingo cards. Uh, and players are going to be spread once again. We'll wait for the game start signal. But in the meantime, if you could see what's happening on camera two screen, and you can't because I'm recording the screen right now, I guess it would have been good to record camera two screen perhaps. Oh, fell from a high, high place. This is one of the spread player's bugs. If I say respawn, yes, we are doomed. All right, let me restart the game. So I mentioned how spread players has a bug, and that's one of them. Sometimes when you get spread, you just instantly die. That time it said fell from a high place, but usually I like suffocate in a wall. Um, like I said, it only happens like 1 in 20 times, but I've tested this map like hundreds of times, and so I've seen that happen a few times. All right, so in any case, uh, you cannot see it over on the other screen, but uh, camera two, the other player, uh, is currently has an inventory that is just filled with maps. All nine of his slots on his hotbar uh, contain stacks of 64 maps, uh, and he has been teleported back to the spawn room, uh, which means he is currently looking at the map right at this moment. And since all players use the same map, and all maps update when any player updates the map. This means that, for example, if I go into creative mode and give myself, let's give myself a delicious apple because it just looks nice and ripe and juicy and I want it. Brian got an item and you'll see it's updating on my map immediately. I don't have to throw a map on the ground. It doesn't tell me in the chat to throw a map on the ground. If I do throw a map on the ground, uh, I'm not gonna get teleported because it knows that there's a white player who's currently holding the map. Uh, and so as a result, you can have an even better experience because now you don't have to do that kind of like silly teleporting back and forth, throwing the map on the ground. And you can do that in one player mode or two player mode. Basically, if you have an extra player who is not playing, simply have them join the white team at the beginning of the game. Uh, and then the game will kind of automatically handle things for them. It'll fill their inventory full of maps. It'll put them in creative mode. It'll teleport them to the spawn point and they will be just standing there holding the map. Uh, you can actually see on... Uh, kind of right below here where my cursor is, 
uh, you could see where actually that player is standing on the map um, near the center of the bingo card uh, because it shows the player showing up on the map. Um, let's see, is there anything else we need to talk about? When you do get bingo, which is five in a row or a column or a diagonal, uh, the map will detect this, and so you can see on my bingo card, all I need here is a name tag in order to get bingo. So I'll give myself a name tag, and the game notices that you've won, and it sets off fireworks uh, and puts something in the chat that allows you to actually like click this and return to spawn. Uh, as I've mentioned before, you can also just teleport back to 150, 150, 150, but perhaps you should click that. Perhaps something exciting will happen. Um, yeah, and there may be there may be some other hidden features or Easter eggs in the map uh, that you may discover or may not discover that I may talk about in a future video. Um, but I think at this point, I've talked about most of the things. I'm sure there will be bugs. We've already seen one bug with spread players when you first start. Sometimes you just like immediately die or suffocate in a wall, um, which is, I think, a Minecraft bug as opposed to a bug in my map. But I'm sure there are also bugs in my map. Um, and so if you find them, uh, you can let me know. First off, once again, if you found a bug, make sure, are you playing in 14 week 11b? You better be playing in 14 week 11b snapshot, uh, because that's the only thing you can play the map in. Um, but yes, if you find a bug, uh, you can PM me on YouTube if you like, or you can, um, I'm gonna post a thread on the Minecraft forums about the map, uh, and so you could put something there if you want. Um, if you have feature requests, I mean, I guess people can put them in the comments of the video or on the Minecraft forum. I don't know. We'll see if the map turns out to be popular. I don't know if and when I'm going to update this map. Uh, I'm not going to do it each week for the snapshots, if the snapshots go and break anything. Um, but if in a month from now, when 1.8 finally comes out, uh, if the map needs an update, I might make an update then. Um, and I might add some more features then, and we'll see kind of like how things are going. But I've played the map a number of times now, and it's pretty fun and seems to mostly work. And so hopefully I've given you enough information. Um, it's just going to be a file, like a zipped up Minecraft world. Uh, if you don't know how to take a zipped up Minecraft world and put it in your game, uh, then there are friendly things called Google and the internet and forums and different things that you can go to find information about that. Uh, sorry, I'm not your Minecraft technical support, uh, so don't ask me how to do that. Um, you should be able to find those things out on your own. Uh, once again, the map is not completely updated. You'll see there's a name tag in two slots. There we go, board randomization complete. Uh, it takes a little while to get that last last final thing. But now I've got a new bingo card, and so maybe I'll go play a, another game of bingo um, for realsies this time. Uh, yeah, this is this is the map. That's my YouTube, youtube.com slash Lorgon111. I've got a Twitter, Lorgon111. You can press this button to go visit my YouTube if you want. Um, the map, uh, Minecraft Bingo, uh, has its own Twitter account, actually, which I'm not sure if that's a clever thing to do or not. Um, but yeah, it's just probably just gonna post links to like this video that says, hey, the map download's available and you should go find out information. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time making this map. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Um, I think it's pretty fun. And yeah, I hope as always that you guys are having a great day and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.